I was all week long, I knew this was coming, and I tried to think of just an excellent question to start off with. And finally, today, I came up. So, are you ready? Ready. What is your favorite color? <laughs> My favorite color, kind of a girly color, but it's yellow. Yellow? Oh, yeah. yeah. Got some yellow fans. Yellow fans. Love the people clapping up. Yeah, yellow. Love yellow. It's my favorite light. Anyway. So Prodigy, you saw this video about Prodigy. Um, some would consider this man a prodigy at football. Um, Especially probably in Lynchburg, your hometown. E.C. Glass? Oh, I like the Brookville Oh, I like E.C. Glass better. That's <laughs> <laughs> was, that a, was that a rival? <laughs> was that a rival? Uh, yeah, they were actually AAA when I was there. Oh, uh, all right. I didn't really have anything to do with that. Right. So Lynchburg, has anybody been to Lynchburg before? Raise your hand. Woo! It's from Lynchburg. Wow. Yes! Funny. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's on. Uh, One lovely person from Lynchburg. Lynchburg holds a dear heart, dear, dear spot in my heart. I think that's where I went to college. Uh, Liberty. No. Yeah, there's a, I knew somebody would go. Yeah, Liberty. We have, we have names for you all, but our, our name is Flame, so I can guess what it goes to. You probably all the Lulus. The Lulus. Thank you, Logan. Please. I'll keep drawing. Um, I, I'm from Ohio, so I can drive the snow. So give us a rundown. What was, what's your first memory of, of playing football? Uh, first memory of playing football. Um, actually, my cousin got me started playing football. He goes here, his name is Zach McCray, he plays defensive end. Um, he got me started. I was a basketball player growing up. I didn't want to play football as a contact sport. Look like it hurt. I didn't want to play. <laughs> he got me out there about age nine. First day, we didn't even we put on the pads, and I was going to start running. About that time, I told my mom on the, on the second lap, my mom don't want to play anymore. I want to quit. She's like, you better get up and keep running. <laughs> She's like, I paid for this year. You're going to do it. And I stuck it, I stuck it out. And about uh, a week later, I fell in love with it. In case you guys didn't know, we both were in the same recruiting class. I just went to a different D1 school <laughs> to, play, to play quarterback. <laughs> it was a club team. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so you grew up in Lynchburg. Give, give us a rundown. What are your childhood like playing football? Give us a rundown of your, your story in Lynchburg. Of my football or my overall story? All together. Overall story. Hit us with it. Well, my football story was... I was heads and shoulders taller than everybody, so I was so I was therefore more dominant than everybody. And then uh, I kind of everybody kind of called me in eighth grade. Uh, I was surprisingly I was five ten in eighth grade and shorter than you know, most people in our class. And uh, you know, at the end of eighth grade I was five ten. At the start of ninth grade, so that two month span. I was 6'4". Whoa! <laughs> six inches in the summer. Not, not the worst time of my life. <laughs> but um, but uh, other, other than my sports life and my growing life, I, uh, I was a part of a single parent. It was just my mom. Um, didn't really know my dad until about two years ago. And, uh, but he's, he's a good guy. And, He's pretty sorry he wasn't around in my life. Um, but uh, I lived with my grandparents until I was about age eight, eight or nine. Um, you know, they're still, that's still mom and dad to me, kind of. I mean, I have my mom, of course. I mean, she's my mom, but my grandparents are like my real parents. And, uh, and then I lived with my cousin from about nine to 13, 14, because my mom worked three jobs just to be able to take care of the you know, house payments and the, me to go to school. Um, then, 
and I moved back in with my mom and uh, I transferred from a private school uh, to my Christian to a public school in Brookville. And uh, that transition was very weird for me because um, from a private school to a public school, you're extremely sheltered. Um, you don't really get to see many things. I had 18 people in my class to uh, I went to Brookfield and I had 250 people in my class. Um, very strange in that regard. Okay. Um, those were my younger days. My, younger teen, days. my teen days were teen a lot different. Or, well, tell me your teen years. Uh, my high school years, teen years, I guess. Um, I, actually enjoyed, I actually enjoyed my high school years. Um, you know, I made a lot of new friends at my new school. Uh, a lot of them I played football with, basketball with growing up. Uh, I really enjoyed those guys, and uh, a positive part of it, they were, uh, they were a bunch of Christian guys too, and they're still some of my best friends to this day. Um, I went through a lot of a lot of tough times in high school with you know, just that single parent thing, and not knowing how to balance between my mom and my grandparents and my aunt and uncle uh, and, and my cousin. So um, you know that was really good in, in that regard. But sports wise. Uh, had a lot of ups and downs. Um, we were the best team my senior year, no doubt about it. We uh, went 13 and one, and we lost in the state championship by four. And uh, it was kind of my fault. Threw an interception on the one yard line oh, uh, yeah. to lose the game. I'm going to blame you for that. Yeah, it was completely my fault. Was it really? Yeah, imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I intercepted him. <laughs> 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 All right. So, what? What's your? Uh, what's your first memory of church? Uh, my first memory of church. You know, when you're younger, you know you go to church, but you never really think about it. Um, but my first memory of church. It's not really a godly reason. It was my first memory. Uh, I went to church with my grandparents, and my mother. Church service went on. We can let it out. My grandparents thought I was leaving with my mom. My mom thought I was leaving with my grandparents. So I'm sitting there and three hours later, <laughs> still waiting for somebody to take me home. <laughs> my mom and uncle show up. We're worried, we're worried sick about you. Yep, still sitting there. <laughs> of course, there's no cell phones at this point in time, so I'll stream it. Right in the church. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my last thing, or my first thing remembering about uh, actually being in church is when I started at my new church, it's called Blue Ridge. Um, the, it was right beside, right near my house. And uh, so I really, it was actually a you know, contemporary church. It was upbeat. You could, uh, it was kind of something that you could go and hang out. And, and they didn't just like, you know, throw the will of God on you. They, uh, they would talk to you about it just to kind of introduce you. And then once you got you know, more into their uh, their swing of things and became more of a family, it, it changed. And, you know, you can talk to any of them about it. And uh, I actually really enjoyed it. Went there for Sunday and then Wednesday services. And, uh, until, you know, once football season got out when I was you know, not always busy. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it. I actually got a couple of my friends to start going with me. My cousin go with me. And, my mom actually got my mom to go with me, and it's kind of made it a, a family affair. And, uh, we all really enjoyed it, and then uh, I think it kind of brought all this pleasure as a family. Yeah, very cool. This is weird, and it's, this is like a conversation. I'm just gonna act like you guys are here. Weird. I went to the Blue Ridge Community Church too, and I was there. I led worship for the youth group. I think so you I probably remember, know who I am. I think I remember seeing there you. There it is. That's why when I walked in your office, I looked at you kind of weird. Right here. Logan Thomas knows me. <laughs> the camera is rolling. <laughs> uh, what made you? What was the? What was the final thing that made you like? You went to church, and besides being stranded there, after that, like, what was it that made it click? What was the final thing that maybe made you start actually falling after Christ? It was actually, you know, they had been feeding me. Uh, we went from the First Testament to the Second Testament all the way through. And uh, it never really hit me until we started reading the, the book of Revelation and uh, just talking about what the rapture is going to be like. And, um, you know, it kind of made you think, man, hey, that's not something I want to be a part of. And, uh, you know, I kind of want to be taken before any of, that, any of that happens. But it wasn't just because of that. It was, 
You know, just because, you know, you see everything that God is, God can do and what He has done. And, uh, you know, there's no reason He can't do anything bigger and greater for that and, uh, than that. And it kind of just, uh, it kind of hit me then, uh, just reading that and then knowing what I knew before. It was, uh, it was kind of a eye-opening experience and it kind of, once you think about it, it kind of just made me say, hey, I want to give my life to Christ. Cool, man. Um, all right, so usually when you think of somebody that's, you know, like uh, doing ministry, the word ministry, serving in the church or whatever, uh, you think of like a, a pastor or a missionary, somebody that's going over, over to Africa, uh, meeting with people that don't speak their language or whatever. But how do you serve Jesus here at Tech? How do you use your gifts uh, as, your, as a prodigy? How do you use that on the field and off the field? How do you do that? What do you, what do, you do? Uh, within the team, I think mine is uh, not the way I act or any, or the way I act, not what I say. Um, you know, I really don't go out there and say much. Everybody knows that I'm a Christian on the team. Um, so I lead by you know, just my characteristics. I don't really try to go out there and be anybody I don't want to be and try to show off. And um, I think guys see that for that reason. And, you know, nobody really forces anything on me from, from uh, you know, a satanic aspect. I guess that's what you want to say. Um, so in that aspect, it's like that. And then, you know, God gave me the gifts that I have, and he wants us to use them. And, you know, I'll go out there, you know, some games have a great game, some games have a terrible game, and um, just kind of, it doesn't matter what happens. He's the he's the one that put me out there, and he wants me to use my athletic abilities for him, and, and that's what I do. And, and I got to go uh, give all the glory to him because without him, I can't do it. Awesome. Um, I know sometimes it's really, really, really difficult. I guess to keep your testimony. I can't imagine. Well, I can't imagine. I've had so much pride. I've had stadiums looking down at me and trying to watch and see what I was doing. And analyzing my every move. So I do know the pressure. No, I don't. Not at all. So I can't imagine that pressure and then the pressure of trying to keep my testimony in that regard. So why? What's the point? What's the point of keeping your testimony? The point yeah. is, point blank, period, is that God has done everything for me. He's, uh, he's made me who I am today. He's got me through the trials and tribulations I've had. Um, you know, I could have gone the wrong way being a single parent, um, not having that father figure in my life. And, uh, you know, I took, I took the road of the better, and, uh, you know, I am who I am today. And, uh, you know, I probably, probably wouldn't be here if it, if it wasn't for him. Um, so I listen to what would be different. What's the, what's the difference pre-Jesus, post-Jesus for Logan Thomas? Um, you know, I got saved at a fairly young age, so uh, my pre-Jesus uh, saved aspect would be, I don't, you know, don't yeah. remember much, but my, my coherent, you know, knowing what Jesus is about is, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of changed my view. I want to I wanna go out there and help other people. I want to go out there and, and show other people what he has done for me. Um, you know, we have a chaplain on our team, his name is Johnny Shelton, and uh, he's kind of, He's kind of giving me a nickname, Joshua. Um, anybody that, you know the, that was here before me, Tyrod Taylor, um, he called him Moses, and it was kind of, you know, I'm Joshua. <laughs> I'm supposed to go up there and lead the men after he has he is passed. And uh, so it's kind of, I just want to be that disciple, not for the team, but for everybody else. And, uh, you know, he's the one, God is the one that kind of showed me everything. And um, what Johnny has been telling me lately is uh, stay in the word and uh, the word will show you show you the right way to go and uh, in the past couple months I've been doing so uh, I felt a lot better about myself and been a lot more comfortable. Very cool. Um, I'm going to have one more question for you. I can be up here all night. Are you going to be at Georgia Tech? Oh, we're definitely going to be at Georgia Tech. <laughs> When you do, can you give me a shout out on the ESPN? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yes. yes. Right. You'll come, come at the end. All right. So they might cut you out. Uh, they might. <laughs>